Hey guys, how's it everybody? This is Storm Pal, and if you're like me, when you tried to get into Dragon Ball Legends, you found that all the how-to guides on the internet were a little too confusing for new players. They used really crazy terminology and just overall did not feel very new player friendly. Well, I am here to solve that problem. Here is everything you need to know about getting started in Dragon Ball Legends as a new player, and I'm gonna do my best to keep this all around 10 minutes, give or take. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Don't worry too much about how to actually fight for right now or what all the cards really mean. I know that the tutorial may make you think like this is super important and like you're playing Dragon Ball Fighters where you're mastering combos down to the exact precise button press, but really all you need to know just starting out is that this card makes your hands go pew pew and this card makes your hands go punch punch and this card makes your hands go big boom. And each character also gets a green card, which gives them a unique boost or a buff or some kind, and a few handful of characters even get purple ones that also do some pretty cool stuff. But really, you don't have to worry about it too much. You also need to know that holding down on the screen will charge up key. You need key to use these cards, and another way of kind of getting key a little bit slower is to move around a little bit and sidestep and, and do things like that. But anyway, don't worry too much about it. You'll get the hang of it by playing the story, which, by the way, what should you be spending your main time doing right now? Uh, you should be getting as many units as possible as your main goal. And how, how do you do that exactly? How do you get more units or characters in the game? Well, you have to summon, of course. And how do you summon, though? Well, you need to get Chrono Crystals, which are the main game's currency. So by far the easiest way to get crystals early on is to play through the story mode. So there are tons and tons of missions that you can play and you'll get about 20 crystals a piece because you get 10 just for beating it for the first time. And then if you go to the actual missions tab in the main menu, you'll see that you got 10 crystals just for beating it for the first time there as well. And a lot of the missions have multiple difficulty levels that garner the same results. So really quickly, you can get thousands of crystals to start out just by playing through the story mode. And it's good because you'll kind of learn some basics about combat and, and how to play anyway by doing that. Now that you've got a lot of crystals, just make sure to summon effectively and as much as possible. I used to be very, very, very stingy with my crystals, but really you have to spend them. This is the main thing that they're there for. So don't be afraid to spend them. You'll get more throughout other events. There's tons and tons of ways to get crystals. So when you see something like a special deal, for example, every day banners will have a daily discount where you can do a single summon for 20 crystals as opposed to the normal 100. So always, if nothing else, make sure you log on and do as many daily discounts as you possibly can. And on the weekends, there's usually specials where you can get like a weekend's ticket and it gives you a, a entirely free summon. And speaking of free summons, you'll also notice the Master Pack tickets. You get these throughout various events in the game, and they are always going to be free tickets that you can use to get some good beginner characters. That'll be really useful starting out. And there's, again, no catch with that. They're completely free. You just get them by doing events. So every now and then, check the Tickets tab and see if you have any that you can use to get some nice little freebies. So the reason why I say that you want to summon as much as possible, especially starting out, the sooner you do this, the more effective it's going to be, is because you want to obviously have as many characters as possible and have a very wide variety. This is so that way you can build the best teams as possible and you can build a different variety of teams. And not only that, but even if you've unlocked some characters that you like playing as, you need to keep summoning because for one, of course, you may, you know, get a different character that you like even better. But even on top of that, you will get dupes, which will give you Z power. And basically what that means, you'll notice the first couple times that you summon dupes or summon the same character more than one time, you'll notice that it adds stars and eventually it will say that you limit broke them. What that means basically is that adding different stars to your character will make them get stronger. Each character has certain tiers. If you go to the show details tab on them and you look at their Z abilities, you'll see that starting out, they have certain buffs that they provide to their team members. And then you'll notice that it may say after a certain amount of stars, that buff actually gets even and better. So you want to make sure that you're still summoning even if you've got a team that you like because you have the potential to limit break them and make them even more powerful. You may also notice that certain characters have Zenkai and when you see that basically that means that after you have achieved the maximum amount of stars for that character you will have the option to Zenkai awaken them and basically that'll unlock a whole different set of stars and a whole different set of new Zenkai abilities. Only a handful of characters get these and they add them pretty 
frequently, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. As far as characters go, Sparking are the rarest, Extreme are mid-tier, and Hero are meh. You may also notice some characters are Legends Limited. These are very special limited edition characters that they bring around every now and then, and they're usually some of the best units in the game, generally speaking. Within the characters, not only is there the rarity level, but you'll also notice their element type or their color, and don't worry too, too much about that for the time being. Basically, at the beginning of each battle, it will show the chart for what types are more effective or more vulnerable to each other. I have not really put much work at all into memorizing this chart because it puts it right there at the beginning of the battle. The main thing is to have some variation. You don't want to have a team entirely full of one type of character because then they'll all be vulnerable to the same thing. You want to try to have as much variation as possible and spread the colors around a little bit. I mean, you've, you've played Pokemon, right? It's not that much different. So now that you've summoned a decent bit of characters, you wanna go ahead and build your team. You can go there and filter by tags to see which characters are all on the same tag. So try building something simple like a Saiyan team just starting out since you can use Shallot on that. And a, there are a lot of Saiyan characters, so you've probably got a decent amount that can go on this by now. So the game will show all the characters that it considers Saiyan characters, and you can hold down on each character to get a better idea of their stats and abilities. Hit the show show details button and go to the ability tag and the very first thing to consider when adding a character or not to your team is their Z ability. This will show what type of characters that unit will boost and how exactly they'll buff them. A lot of times they will buff characters that they share tags with but sometimes they may only buff characters that have the same color so just keep an eye out for that and make sure that they are buffing the character type that you want. A lot of times it's good to focus on something. You know, you may want to build a Saiyan team, and so try to have as many characters that actually specifically buff the Saiyan tag as possible, so that way your Saiyan characters on the team are going to be doing awesome. For now, don't worry too, too much about it, or with the number crunching and the power levels, just go with a handful of characters that have Z abilities that sound useful, that boost the tag for the team that you're trying to build, and spread out your type variation as much as possible. And then while you're here, you can also soul boost as much as possible. You'll want to eventually unlock all the panels on each characters, and doing this gives a small stat boost to your character, but there's a lot of different panels to unlock. So. There's a big difference between a character who has no soul boosting at all and a character who has been completely soul boosted. This becomes very, very evident when you're playing PvP. You can definitely tell when you're playing against a unit that has not been soul boosted because they're very fragile and they'll die in like three hits. The more you soul boost, the more equipment slots your character will get. And when you're just starting out, feel free to just auto select the equipment. You probably won't have that much equipment just starting out, so don't worry. It's just small boosts, nothing crazy, again, if you're just starting out. To get Get things like souls for boosting and equipment, you'll want to watch out for certain events. Go to the events tab and you can see certain events that you can play through that you can use to grind for these souls. So it can get a little tedious at times when you're trying to soul boost a character and you've got to go through the same event a bunch, which luckily once you have cleared all the challenges, you can use skip tickets and you can skip through an event several times so that way you don't have to actually do the combat in the event, but you'll still get all the perks of beating it one to five times. Lastly, you will want to go to the training tab and you'll want to use training items to boost your characters. Each training has a different level requirement. So for the biggest impact, try to put characters closest to that level requirement in there. So for example, if a training's requirement is level 1000, you'll see that characters that are right around level 1000 get much more out of this than characters that are at level three or 4000. You unlock different training items again throughout events, doing the story mode and things like that. And so you'll want to keep grinding on the story mode, kind of the centerpiece of everything right now, just starting out is play the story mode as much as possible. It will give you all the different soul boosts that you'll need to boost your characters. It'll give you crystals that you need to summon. It'll give you equipment, things of that nature, training items. So keep, keep playing that story mode as much as possible. Just sit there and grind while you're playing at your desk or whatever and get yourself some awesome teams built. So with these tips, hopefully you should be able to get started in the game pretty efficiently and effectively. But of course, there is so much more to explore and I do plan on making a couple more in-depth videos. If you have any other questions about Dragon Ball Legends or anything like that, leave the comment as well. I'll be doing my best to reply to all questions that come up in the comments. So be sure to leave one if you have one and I will get back to you as soon as possible. But for now, I would like to thank you all for watching. I hope you have a nice day and goodbye.